So, the video I've been thinking about making, and I've made videos on this topic before, um, but I'm making it now because um, quite recently I've seen quite a few um, people on the Dalmatian groups, and they're not actually asking about this subject, but people are chiming in on it. So it's Littermate Syndrome. So what's happening on these Dalmatian groups is um, people are putting up a picture of two puppies asking for advice on what harness or what feed to put, what dog food to buy for the puppies. They're not asking about Littermate Syndrome, but everybody goes, ah, you shouldn't have bought two with Littermate Syndrome. And I think part of the reason why there seems to be more people having two puppies, two litter mates currently is because people, are, breeders are struggling to sell puppies. I think that's the reason. Um, so, anyway, as you guys know, I intentionally kept Aria and Pod. Lannister, don't bite her. Um, and I intentionally kept Pumpkin and Raven. Now, Lannister! Stop it! You naughty boy! You naughty! Pumpkin, you've got a bad foot. Just pack it in. Lannister! Shall I take it off while we're in the field? Pumps, come here, baby. Um, so, I knew about Littermate Syndrome. I knew about the advice on Littermate Syndrome of... Sorry about me sniffing, by the way. Um, of not keeping two from the same litter or even two from different litters that are close together in age. So really, you could probably count Lanny and Phoebe in that category because they're only five weeks apart in age. Now, one of the um, potential issues of um, Littermate Syndrome is that they form a tighter bond with each other than with you, the human, and that didn't happen with Pumpkin and Raven, but it did happen um, for a while at least with Aria and Pod. Um, they absolutely formed a bond and they'd go off and do stuff together um, and they wouldn't always listen to me because they were together and it was like they were encouraging one another um, and egging each other on because they had each other so that happened with those two but it didn't happen with Pumpkin and Raven so with Aria and Pod to split them up a little bit at the start they both slept downstairs so I moved Aria upstairs so they had overnight where they were separate where Aria would sleep with me. She'd come to bed with me and Nala and Jude. Um, and she'd be away from Pod. And then I did more walks separately. So that they weren't bonding with one another too much. They had to either stand on their own two feet, rely on me for comfort and security or rely on one of the other dogs for comfort and security. I know Pumps is body you know. Come on this way! Nala this way! Nala banana! So that's what I did with them. Obviously we did training sessions separately. I didn't do a lot of ring craft classes but I tried a couple of them and I take one to one ring craft 
and then the other one to the other ink crafts. They were doing that separately. If I went back in the car, I'd take one of them and leave the other one at home. So those are like practical, easy to implement solutions um, for preventing littering syndrome there. Now the other issue with littering syndrome, which I believe happens in same sex parents, so you know two boys or two girls, is they'll fight. And that was the issue I had with Pumpkin and Raven. When Raven was younger, she was very, very bossy, like when she was in with the litter, you know, when they were a lot younger. Sorry, I just have to blow my nose. Um, yeah, so Raven was very, very bossy in the litter. She was one of the bigger puppies and used to throw her weight around a lot. And when the litter left, other than obviously Pumpkin, she continued to throw her weight around with Pumpkin. And then eventually Pumpkin got sick of it and told her off. And then what also happened was Raven would throw her weight around a little bit with the older dogs who all told her off um, for behaving like that. So then what Raven would do is she'd get up after being told off by one of the adults and she'd have a go at Pumpkin, as in like, yeah, I've been told off, but I'm still boss over you kind of stuff. Um, a Pumpkin then it turned into a fight because Pumpkin would defend herself because Pumpkin hadn't done anything to warrant Raven's behaviour. So what I noticed in all these situations was Raven was the problem. Raven was the one causing the problems. Pumpkin wasn't starting on Raven. Pumpkin wasn't bossing Raven around. Pumpkin wasn't you know, throwing her weight around in that way. Raven was the one doing that. So I just would try and get involved in these situations before she had a chance to fight with Pumpkin. So if I saw one of the adults telling Raven off, I try and get over by her straight away so that I could redirect her so she wouldn't get up and have a go at Pumpkin. And then when I saw her getting a bit bossy with Pumpkin, I would try and correct her behaviour um, before Pumpkin got a chance to get sick of it. And then between me telling Raven basically not to be a bully and be bossy, and then the adult dogs telling her the same thing, Pumpkin turned into the leader or the boss out of the pairing. And since then, we've not had an issue. Now and again, when Raven gets a bit hormone, ho hormonal, that's hard to say when you've got a block nose. Pod! He's going over there. Um, so yeah, when the hormone levels were a bit higher, um, occasionally Raven gets a little bit bossy but it doesn't turn into a full-on fight because we've established the ground rules and she knows enough to listen to me when I say, no, enough, shut up kind of thing. Pack it in, you're the one who's the issue, not anybody else. And yeah, we've not had an issue since. So I think if you are going to keep litter mates, a boy and a girl is easier. They're less inclined to fight with one another, but I believe they're more inclined to form a really tight bond with one another, which you might have to get involved with. You might have to um, split them up. You might, you know, well, you won't, it's not no might about it. You will have to do that. Pod! Come on, this way. Come on, quick, quick. Um, so you've got to be prepared to make sure they bond more to you than each other, 
which is obviously hard work if they are genuine litter mates because they have spent their whole life together um and then the difficulty with the other difficulty with same sex siblings is at some point the girl is going to come into season so you need to have your plan in place for that immediately don't mess about know what you're going to do know how you're going to keep them set apart um and then with same sex siblings you've got to know and watch their body language watch the way things are happening and be prepared to step in i have literally had to split up pumpkin and raven in fights they've never ever had a fight with any other dog ever only with each other um and yeah you've got to be the boss you've got to be the one that if you say no if you say pack it in they pack it in you can't mess about luckily we've not had any serious injuries pumpkin did have one cut that got infected but other than that i had lucky escapes and i didn't get bitten in the process because that's the other risk is you get bitten when you split up a dog fight um and the other lucky thing is they did it when they were sort of four to six months old so they were smaller and i was able to split them up on my own which isn't always possible um especially if they're bigger um but yeah because i knew and i could see that raven was the instigator i could deal with it and i dealt with it um so you know everybody being negative about aria don't have him so yeah everyone being negative about keeping litter mates if you're prepared to put in the work it's possible it's doable it's harder work than keeping one at a time no doubt about it but aria but it can also work and you know you need to be able to justify it to yourself why you keep it too as well like pumpkin and raven are very very nice quality bitches that will be a good or a big part of Harvena's future generations so it makes sense um from that perspective and the same thing about aria and pod you know i i didn't set out wanted to keep one of each from that litter i just wanted a girl so but i fell in love with pod as well as falling in love with aria um and it's worked out um and especially since she's had seasons where she had to spend quite a large part of time away from him where when she was out of her standing days and out of season so capable of being with pod and he was a pain in the bum and she had to tell him off quite forcefully their bond completely broke and they get along but they don't really play together anymore they don't really interact with each other much anymore um, whereas like Pumpkin and Raven, they do still play with each other a lot. So even though the bond of, well not so much the bond, but even though they were fighting and arguing over the, their place in the pack, now that's decided, they are capable of playing nicely with one, one another and getting on. Um, so yeah, it does work and it can work nicely. So, um, yeah, anyway, I'm going to leave this here and I shall see you all soon. Bye.